So it begins with the seed being planted, and the seed begins to grow. And as the seed begins to grow, the vine shoots forth, and out of the vine comes branches, and from the branches ultimately leaves, and from the leaves and the branches comes fruit. And Jesus uses this image to talk about Christian discipleship, the journey that we are all in, on in faith. Um, and so we're connected to the vine. We're called to abide in the vine. If Jesus says we're the branches and he's the vine, that's where we receive our strength, our nourishment, our support, our encouragement. That's where we grow. Being connected with Christ and the, and the call that Christ has placed on our lives, that's the place where we grow. And as we grow and we bear fruit and our, our grow leaves and reach out for the sun and continue to grow in, in this life of discipleship, we ultimately bear fruit. I mean, it's the word that's used over and over and over in the life of the church. If you grew up in the church, you will have heard the language of bearing fruit. Be a fruit bearer. Bear fruit. We're called to bear fruit over and over and over again. If you're new to the church, well, you just heard it for the first time. And you'll hear it again and again and again because it's a part of our relationship with Christ and ultimately our relationship to the world. To be a fruit bearer is not just about accumulating a bunch of fruit. Now, in, in the biblical sense, we, we kind of transform that language into something more than just talking about apples and oranges and bananas. Uh, we hear from the Apostle Paul that the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Of these things, do them as much as you want. There is no law against doing and participating in these things. Amen? In other words, share these things as much as you can. And Paul says that's the fruit of the Holy Spirit. The evidence of a Spirit-filled life is the fruit that you bear which is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness. Not one of those things. It's trying to live our lives and embrace and share all of those things through our lives. Amen? And guess what? We shared last week that that takes a whole lifetime. That takes a lifetime. It doesn't just happen overnight. It's not just you gave your life to Christ and overnight, boom, I'm instantly a abundant fruit bearer and I can do all these things. No, it takes work. It takes effort. It takes growth. It takes a lifetime. It takes a lifetime. So in the biblical sense, the fruit of the Spirit is the fruit that we're talking about. The fruit that we share. And the fruit that we share is not something we keep unto ourselves. It's not love yourself as much as you can. Be joyful unto yourself as much as you can. Be patient just for you. No. Those are actions. To love someone else. To offer the joy of Christ with and for someone else to be patient that we might bear the burdens of others in our lives that we might know that they're on the journey with us too and that it requires some patience it's about this mutual relationship in the world it's not all about you everybody say it with me it's not all about me, not all about me. that was as weak as the joyful stewardship <laughs> proclamation i mean it's not all about you it's not all about me amen not all I mean, sure, the love of Christ comes to each and every one of us, and we receive that. It's a personal relationship, but that personal relationship transforms us to be a people who are in relationship with everyone else, with everyone else. Mm. That's good stuff, but it's challenging stuff. And the problem with the language of the church is that we use it so often that it just becomes kind of the road thing that we say. I mean, you talk about being a fruit bearer. You probably have heard over the years a couple of bear fruit sermons. Uh, when you read the text and you hear Jesus challenge the disciples to go and bear fruit, this is my commandment. Love one another. Now go and do it, is what he's saying. Go and bear the fruit of the Spirit. We all talk a good talk, don't we? And so I think the first lesson for us today is you can't bear fruit and just talk about it. I had a friend when I was in college who is an awesome water skier. And we had made plans over spring break that we were going to go up north and do something that Floridians on spring break do. We do not go to the beach. <laughs> That's a northern activity. They come to the beach. We go to the ski resorts where there's snow for a week. We can handle snow for a week, by the way. True Floridians. Okay? 
And so we go, so, so this friend of our, my, mine at, at college, he was like, oh yeah, I love skiing. I was like, oh great. He says, I'm really good at snow skiing. I, I, you know, I, can, I can do the double black diamonds and all that kind of stuff. I said, well, that'd be great. You can go with me. <laughs> and he said, oh yeah, man, I'm looking forward to it. So we went to the ski resort and we got there. And my first sign that he didn't know what he was talking about <laughs> was when he got to put on his ski boots and he said, oh, these must be the new ones. And, I don't, and I'm like, new ones? Those are the same ski boots that have been around for years. He did not know how to strap himself into the ski boots. Okay? And so I figured I'd teach him a lesson. If you're going to talk, you need to walk. Amen? And so we got on the ski lift and we went to the top of the mountain right away. We didn't even do a warm-up. Double black diamond. Now, this was when I was a little younger. Don't take me to a double black diamond now. And we got to the top of the mountain and he started talking real fast. Oh, you this is pretty high up. You know? look, at, look at all the people crashing on the mountain. And then he got to the top, by the time we were at the top, he was begging me, please don't let me come out the mountain, please. I said, I thought you told me you went snow skiing. He said, I've been water skiing, I'm a very good water skier. I said, there's a huge difference between snow skiing and water skiing. My brothers and sisters, we can't talk about bearing fruit. We have to walk the walk, amen? It's not about the talk, it's about actually bearing fruit, which Jesus says is do these things. Don't just talk about them. I mean, I can talk about being a lover. You know, I'm a Christian. I love people. Uh, but you know that black guy at work? Forget it. Or that Hispanic guy down the street? I don't like him. Or how about that Irish guy named Jonathan Nash? <laughs> I mean, that's not living into the fruit of the Spirit. Amen. We have to overcome our pride, our prejudice, our racism. The deepest things that, that hurt our souls that keep us out of a relationship with other people. Amen. Amen. So you can't just talk about it. You can't just talk about it. You don't talk and bear fruit. You actually bear fruit. You bear fruit. Amen? Amen. The other thing is you can't just look like you bear fruit. <laughs> right? I mean, how many Christians do you know wear the shirts? You know, a lot of good Christian shirts. Drew's got examples. Drew here. Drew's wearing a Christian shirt. It's true. God is love. God is love. But... You know, it's not just a fishy slap on your car. And I will even say that looking like a Christian sometimes is the way we use the language, too. Like, hey, praise the Lord, brother. It's good to see you. Amen. Glory be. Bless you. All honor. I'm a follower of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I mean, that, you know, it's not about participating in the, in the activity or the theater of the gospel, I call it. It's not just, you can't just look like a fruit tree. <laughs> you either are or you aren't but there are some who try when I was in uh, Haines City, Florida as the youth director at a First United Methodist Church Haines City uh, it was a, an established church had been around there for a long time and there were some definitely interesting characters in the church people who had been there a long time uh, one of those guys was by the name of Walter and the youth and the children called Walter the general. Uh, because when Walter would come to church, you could hear him before you actually saw him. Not because he was talking real loud, but because he had so many medals on his jacket that when he walked down the hall, he'd be like, chink, chink, <laughs> chink. He called him the general. He looked like he'd been awarded a, a merit of, you know, from the president or something. Uh, he had badges and banners and little pins with long chains of had years of service and all this kind of stuff. And, and, and Walter had been a participant in Sunday school faithfully without missing a day for 85 years. And he was very proud of his medals and his accomplishments to the point where he would stand next to the coffee service table in the social hall and just lean against the wall like this. <laughs> now this is... Now, Walter is 80, I would think, probably 87 at that time, okay? And he'd just stand there like this, and people would walk up and they'd get their coffee and say, Hey, Walter, hey, good to see you. He was like Sunday school king. He, <laughs> he never missed. He was there all the time. He had all the badges and medals to show. Now, there was another lady in the church by the name of Miss Bessie. Now, Miss Bessie was actually who I would call Miss Bessie the Mother Teresa of First United Methodist Church, Haines City. I mean, she loved people. 
and she was involved in the community in ways you couldn't even possibly comprehend. Same girl her whole life, a school teacher. She was at the homeless shelter. She was working with Habitat for Humanity. In her 80s, she was swinging a hab hammer at Habitat for Humanity. I mean, she loved people. She was awesome with hospitality, welcomed and greeted everybody in there. And Miss Bessie was probably in her 90s at this time. And one day I'm talking with Miss Bessie, and she said, uh, we were talking about just things at the church, and, and Walter came walking in. Chink, chink, <laughs> chink. And she said, Walter, he's there. He went, he went to stand by his coffee pot, and uh, it was right before Sunday school, and Miss Bessie looked at me, and she goes, I love Walter to death. And I said, well, that's good. And she goes, but you know what? Walter's just an ornament. <laughs> What? Miss Bessie? Yeah, Walter's just an ornament. I never see him involved in the community. I never see him helping other people out. All he does is go to Sunday school, get his pin, and go home. Hmm. Now, she wasn't saying that Walter was a bad guy. She's just thinking for all the medals and awards that Walter received over these years, you might actually have begun to see some fruit. But he was just an ornament. Now, I was researching online this week about fruit and bearing fruit and fruit trees. There are actually a category of fruit tree called ornamental fruit trees. <laughs> you know that? Now, these are the trees that are pretty. I mean, they, they're... they're they're created, horticulturists, you know, but how do they do the magic of horticulture? Create these trees for beauty. Their leaves are pretty, their flowers are pretty. I got news for you. The fruit is very bitter. It's not a real fruit tree. It's just the facade of a fruit tree. It's an ornament, just like Walter. And when I was in uh, Roxburgh, North Carolina, we moved into this little parsonage right across from the church. That's where we were when I was in seminary. <coughs> Leslie and Emily and I moved up there together. And in the front yard was this beautiful purple-leaped tree. Its branches were intertwined and had huge thorns on it and these big, beautiful purple leaves all over it. And once a year, that tree would flower. And the whole tree would turn from purple to brilliant white. Uh, it was gorgeous. And then Jesse Witt, my next door neighbor, turned over to me and he said, Hey, Roy, how do you like the house? I said, I love the house, Jesse. What is that tree? We don't have those trees in Florida. And he said, No, you wouldn't have those trees in Florida, Roy. I said, Well, what is it? He goes, That's a plum tree. And I got all excited. I was like, Yes, we have a plum tree. <laughs> he said, Don't get too excited. The plums stink, Roy. <laughs> I said, What? He said, yeah, that's just one of those decorative plum trees. That's how Jesse talked, by the way. It took me months to understand what he was saying. But anyways, decorative plum tree. It was an ornamental plum tree. It was planted in the yard because it was just pretty. But the fruit that it bore was worthless. Each and every one of you has been called by Christ to bear good fruit for the kingdom. To not just talk the talk, not just look like a fruit tree or make every effort to be an ornament, but rather to live your life in such a way that you and I, together, through Christ, make a difference for somebody else's life in the world other than ourselves. Because what Christian growth does is it leads us on this journey from I receive Christ for myself. Now I grow in Christ and I learn about Christ. And as I begin to learn about Christ, I begin to realize that it's not all about me. As a matter of fact, this relationship and this journey that we're on in Christ is really about being in relationship and offering and giving of ourselves for others. I have a lime tree in the side of my yard right now that is full of limes. Pat me. And uh, I'm terrible at picking the limes off the tree. I do not take care of plants very well. Um, matter of fact, a little side story, no extra charge. Um, when, I, when I was in Lakeland, 
I received a bonsai tree from a lady as a gift because she knew I had a black thumb. I did not have a green thumb. She said, Roy, you cannot kill this little plant. I killed it. It was, it was drier than a toothpick when I got done with it. And it just so happened this lady, her name was Margaret, was coming over to our house for a covered dish dinner. And Leslie turned to me and she said, what are you going to do with your bonsai? Because you know Margaret's going to ask you how it's doing. And I looked at the bonsai, and it had kept all its needles. They were just all brown. So I went in the garage, and I found a crayon of green spray paint. I just spray paint. <laughs> and it worked. It looked like a real thing. And then when Margaret came, and she's like, wow, the bonsai looks great. And then she went to touch it, and the whole thing went. <laughs> <laughs> we cannot continue to live in the facade or the spray painted version of the gospel. The theater of the gospel. We need to begin embodying the gospel that we bear real fruit for the kingdom. But this lime tree in my side yard is so packed with fruit. Somebody finally told me, Roy, you've got to pick the fruit off that tree or you're going to hurt the tree. Because we can't keep the fruit to ourselves. The fruit is produced that it might drop and be shared. And that's what stewardship is all about. Your time your talents, your gifts, and your resources, because all of it is about sharing. To the glory of God, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Amen.